a lot of questions recently about how I travel, how I afford my travels, how I book things, hotels, activities, drivers, photographers, so on and so forth. Now, if you're new to my content, I will kindly ask that you subscribe below. Please let me know what you think of this video in the comment section below. Before we get started, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself and what I've been doing as of recently and how I feel like I can present this information to you. I am a UK-based content creator and I have always loved traveling, but I have recently fallen into traveling for work and I've been blessed enough to visit quite a few countries in the past couple of months. I'm gonna be breaking down to you guys how I personally do things when I'm gonna travel, whether I'm going to Southeast Asia or I'm just going somewhere around the corner in Europe. These are basically all the things that I make sure I do before I go away. So I'm gonna break them down into little sections for you guys so it's a little bit more digestible. So I'm not going back and forth and rambling on about things. I'm gonna try and make it as cohesive as possible and I'm gonna try and answer all the questions that I've gotten recently. So without further ado guys, let's get right into this video. So first of all, before I do anything, I always think to myself, where do I wanna go? That is the first question I ask myself, of course, but if I really have a destination in mind, then I get on with things. But before that, I need to know how much it is that I have and how much I am willing to spend on this vacation. Is it a weekend away? Is it a week away? Is it two weeks away? Or is it going to be about a month long? For weekends away, I only like to go somewhere like Europe. That means I can go somewhere without it being too far away from home, without the journey time being too long. I get maximum amount of time spent in my destination as well as cramming everything into a weekend basically. And it should be somewhere that I can go without having to spend too much money. If it's a weekend away and I'm spending heap loads of money, it's just not worth it. I'd rather use that money and go somewhere far. So you might have to make sure you know what you want to spend and where you want to go. If you don't really know where you want to go, but you've seen places, then just go on Google. I'll tell you something from now, guys. Google is your best friend. Google is your best friend. Have Google by your side anywhere you go, everywhere you go. As long as you got Wi-Fi and you have Google, you are good like you don't need friends <laughs> so of course going anywhere you're gonna have your most expensive things and you're gonna have your least expensive things least expensive things are probably gonna be things like gifts when you're at that destination things like food drink your most expensive things are always going to be your flight and most likely to be your accommodation depending on how you choose to live. There are different types of people in this world. There are people who like to go away and live in the lap of luxury and there are people who like to go away and just fully immerse themselves in the area. They don't really care where they're sleeping. They could be couch surfing, they could be sleeping in hostels. They don't really mind. First and foremost, ask yourself, what kind of person am I? Myself personally, I've never really been a fan of sleeping in hostels or couch surfing unless of course I'm going to stay with family somewhere but I I prefer staying in hotels, in villas, places of that kind. Now, I don't necessarily have to stay in the most expensive hotels, but I do like to feel like I am somewhere that makes me comfortable, that has a little bit of luxury, and I like to feel like, hey, I'm on holiday. I'm in a different space. I wanna enjoy the space I'm in. Once you've figured all of that out, and you know your budget, go onto Google, and start working out the most important things towards that budget. First and foremost, flights. Always book your flights in advance. Now, sometimes I may book a common and then I do my flights. It really does depend where I'm going. If I've seen a deal online, a hotel that I really like is really, really cheap. I may just reserve the hotel or book the hotel and then later date I book the flight. It really does depend on what kind of traveler you are and how savvy you are. But if you know you like to be comfortable and you say to yourself, the moment I book my flights, I have to book my accommodation, but always, always, always do your flights in advance. So there are a couple of tips I'm gonna drop for you guys. Make sure you get a pen and paper, but don't tell anybody else, okay? Let's go. So because I'm always booking flights for myself and I'm always on my computer, always on my phone checking flights, I have figured out several ways to get the cheapest flight to any destination. First and foremost, booking in advance is your best friend. Airlines usually give you the cheapest price six weeks prior to your departure date. So you wanna make sure you're at least looking for your flight 10 weeks before you go anywhere. So that gives you about four more weeks before you actually book the flight and whilst you're still at a nice place to get a good price for it before you enter that six week mark as you're approaching your travel date. I hope I'm making sense guys, please just follow me. Whilst you're looking, you wanna make sure you're going on places like Google, you're going on places like Skyscanner. There's also a site called Momondo. They basically do the hard work for you. They search every single airline, every single agency who are registered with them and they give 
give you the best possible prices for all these flights. Even at times you can go on there and you can see that the price that you saw on Skyscanner is way cheaper on Momondo, which I have found most of the time. And it's always good to have different avenues where you've gone to look for flights. You're basically just comparing them. So they compare them for you, but you're comparing them yourself. Because you're working along with your budget, you want to make sure you're not spending your entire budget on flights. What I always do is I have trouble sleeping. I wake up in the middle of the night a lot. And that's when I tend to look for flights. I whip out my phone and I get onto my internet browser. Before you even search anything on your internet browser, make sure you have deleted your history, you delete all your cookies and all your history data, and then you open an incognito tab. What incognito does, it basically masks your history and it masks all your searches. And once you go onto the internet, you're coming onto the internet like you've never been on there before. And to these search engines and to the websites and all these places where you're searching for flights, you are coming as a brand new person. You've never been there before, but you want to book a flight, which then offers you the cheapest flights. But if you open up your browser regularly, You've been searching for flights for example you've searched for a flight to Dubai yesterday and you searched for a flight to Dubai the week before picked up that you want to go to Dubai which is then going to add a little bit more to your fare. airlines and the search engines and the agencies are going to know that you want to go away and you're looking for the best price but unfortunately you're only going to be hit with expensive tickets because I've compared searching in the middle of the night to in the middle of the afternoon and I always find that searching in the middle of the afternoon brings me the highest most expensive prices now of course you can buy it immediately if you do have the funds readily available or the best thing you can do if you're not prepared to pay for it just yet or you want to see how prices fluctuate then you can always just turn on a search alert what that does is every single day at a certain time it will send you an email going to Dubai for example has dropped by 40 pounds it has increased by 60 pounds or it's at its cheapest in the last couple of weeks so that will then give you the indication whether or not you should buy it now or you should wait a couple of days or a couple of weeks to purchase the ticket but still while doing all of this you you've got ample time to keep searching up until you're comfortable with the price and also sites like Momondo and Skyscanner they give you a nice graph and they can basically tell you when is the cheapest time to travel in the year and when is the most expensive time and you can see how much exactly you're paying on the different days. Now people would say that booking your ticket on a Tuesday is the cheapest time. I haven't necessarily found that that is true because I have tested it out myself but I didn't really see a difference between booking it on a Tuesday and booking it on a Wednesday but I did find that definitely it was cheaper to book in the middle of the night when everybody is asleep and nobody is booking any plane ticket. I've also noticed that flying on a Thursday is cheaper than flying on a Friday. That's because Friday and Saturdays are obviously busier times of the week or people tend to be going away on Fridays. Depending on where you're going of course and what they've bumped the price up to it could maybe be like 50, 40 pounds and if you don't mind paying that extra to fly out on a Friday then so be it but I like to pay the cheapest possible at the time when I'm ready to book so I would usually fly out on a Thursday if it's going to take me maybe like 20 hours to get to where I'm going and spend some of the weekend there and get started a brand new week in that new destination. But it goes without saying the classes of airline obviously come with a premium price and they obviously come with other benefits like lounges and extra baggage sizes. It's always good to remember as well, how do you wanna fly? Do you wanna spend 24 hours flying? Do you wanna spend 17 hours flying? This all comes down to you when you're booking your flight. You can have a flight that's about 400 pounds, but it's gonna take 21 hours to get to where you're going. Or you can have a flight that's like 550 pounds, but it will take you 15 hours to get to where you're going. There's always a premium 400 pound ticket price is cheaper because it's gonna take you longer. Now, if you're going somewhere that's already halfway across the world, World, you don't really want to be spending six hours at the airport it's just gonna make your journey time even longer you've got a 10 hour flight and you've got a connecting three hour flight you don't really want to be in the airport for another six hours that's just long and you have people who don't mind that once you've got your flight booked or you've created a flight search alert then you want to probably go on to looking for accommodation now the best way to do this I feel go on to TripAdvisor TripAdvisor is basically a nice hub for every single hotel in the world every single city town in the world every single pub every single restaurant it's got everything listed on there not just that but what makes it even better is that it's got people real people who have actually traveled there that have left reviews you're hearing firsthand from people who have actually had great experiences or bad experiences you're also hearing from representatives of these hotels and establishments reply to people who leave reviews so it's always good to check TripAdvisor and it's also good to see real photos from guests real reviews from guests. I always like to look at most recent reviews and photos. That gives me a better indication of how the place is doing currently.
separately. So try and do that when you have some time as well. And it's always good to do it when you're in the place because the memory of it is fresh and the experience is really fresh. So if you choose to do it when you leave, you, you may forget a specific thing that you really wanted to let the hotel know, you really wanted to share with people on TripAdvisor. So it's always good before you check out of the hotel, just leave a little review and maybe leave some photos as well. That's always really helpful. I find that it helps me so much when people do that. So I try and do it myself. It might be a bit cheeky, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Whenever I get to a hotel, I'm always like super smiley and super nice. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited to be here. I always let them know if there's a special occasion. So if it's your birthday or it's your boyfriend's birthday, yeah. anniversary, you want to tell your hotel or you want to tell your airline. It's always good to tell your airline as well because they might give you like vouchers to spend on board or they might give you a glass of champagne. You never know how kind they're feeling that day, but they may throw you a glass of champagne, a bottle of champagne, or they may throw you something as big as a whole upgrade. I like that! Guys, I'm thirsty. Talking is thirsty work. Mm. Along with that is something that I think is very, very important. Anywhere that I want to go, I always check gov.uk and that is like the UK's government website that gives you information about pretty much everything. They basically list every single country. You can click on to the country you've decided to travel to and it will give you information like terror updates, it will give you safety information, it will tell you whether or not they think it's safe to travel to that country at the time of the year as well as if you need any visas or you need any extra travel documents it tells you on that website now that's for the uk i'm not really sure what they have in the us or anywhere else in the world but it's always good to check so personally once i've decided where i'm going i like to look at instagram for things like hotels i like to see restaurants i might want to go to even landmarks i want to visit maybe photographers maybe drivers beach clubs if i don't know where i want to go then hashtags as a starting point for example bali restaurants i will go on instagram if I see a really nice picture or a dish that I think looks really good I will click through find the name of the restaurant I'd save it and it's always nice to make collections I have several collections on Instagram for different things and I just save them on there once I get to that destination I'm likely gonna pull out my phone look through the save posts and remember that Instagram hashtags are great location tags are also really good because when people take pictures somewhere even if they were there months ago they still tag that location so you can follow through with the location then you might get an interest in that and you can put that down on your list of things to do when you get to the destination and that always helps i always try and make sure when i'm away i always tag places that i'm at it helps as well when other people who don't even follow me are searching instagram you want to know where you are so it's good to know where you're going to be based where you're going to be living so if you found your accommodation you want to know how far it is for, from somewhere like your embassy in case anything goes wrong you want to know how far away it is from a nearest police station if you are that kind of person then it's always good to just whip out google maps and centre yourself and know what's around you. Know how far it is to get to a restaurant you want to visit from a beach club you want to go to, the nearest beach. So you know once you land, you can kind of get your bearings. This also helps with things like taxis because most of the time, taxis in other countries they usually like to like rip you off especially if they know that you're from a foreign country and they can smell foreigner on you so you can't even try and hide it they will know you're from abroad and they're gonna bump up that price like a hundred times over potato head how much uh, okay, no 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 dollars no no it's just down there 40 oh no no it's okay 40? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Once you know where you are and where you're going and you can kind of figure out your bearings, no one can rip you off. You stand your point and you're like, I'm not paying you that much. If he says no, there's another taxi behind. If you don't know where you're going, then fine. You might want to download something like Uber. But once again, personally, I always make sure I haggle with my taxis. It tends to work most of the time because they know that they're in the wrong for trying to charge me an arm and a leg in the first place. Not only that, but so you can tell your family. If you're moving from place to place, hotel to hotel, villa to villa, make sure you've written down something for your family to know where you are on whatever dates so that they're able to get in touch with you a number that they could possibly reach you on or in an emergency it's just always good to know that other people know where you are now in terms of activities i think one thing i always do which i've mentioned is instagram i always go on instagram to find anything anywhere so there's certain things that you might need to book in advance before you get to your destination if that is so make sure you go on their website i get messages all the time of people are like how can i book barley swing and i'm like i was in the same position as you were one time i had no idea how to go about it but i went on their website 
website, I checked out their Instagram and I got all the information I need. It is always best to find out information for yourself. Don't be scared to research things. Yeah, it's always nice hearing other people's experiences, but you also have to get into the habit of finding out information yourself. You have to rely on sourcing information and storing them and making use of them as you go on your journeys. The first time I went to Bali, I found that I didn't do enough activities. So the second time I had the opportunity to go, I knew that there were certain things I had to do. Otherwise I'd, I'd have kicked myself. So I knew that I wanted to go on Bali Swing, for example. Before I went, I went on Instagram, I saw the beautiful pictures. I was like, okay, I wanna do this. I knew I wanted to go to the zoo. I wanna see elephants. I knew that I wanted to go to a specific beach club. I made sure I checked it out on Instagram, good specific restaurants. Not just that, but I was lucky enough to meet a driver called Putu. I was lucky enough to have his expertise. So I asked, I wanna go on this swing. He was like, I know a better one I can take you to. Things like inf exchanging information, so a great way to acquire knowledge from other people. Once I mentioned it to him that we wanna go and see elephants and we wanna see monkeys. So we'll go to the monkey sanctuary then we'll go see the elephants. He took us to the zoo first. By the time we were done at the zoo, we noticed that we saw monkeys and we saw elephants. There was no need to go to the monkey sanctuary anymore because we had knocked it out the park at the zoo. So it's always good to share information with people that you meet. Have conversations with people in the bar. Not, don't go home with them and don't go do dumb shit with them. Be open to meeting people when you're away. If you've seen that somebody's been somewhere and you saw their post on Instagram, drop them a message. Hey, how much was this or how was this? But make sure you have your own concrete information because you never know the circumstances that those people found themselves in and it's the same for restaurants you can always go online and check out restaurants menus before you go there so you know what to expect so once you've decided on your hotel depending on how many hotels you've booked of course you're going to split your days according to these different hotels or villas or airbnbs however you're comfortable traveling is up to you as well if you know that you're moving from place to place and you've got a big suitcase then you need to think about transportation methods always good to use TripAdvisor to figure out the best form of transportation for when you land and and for while you're around if you're going on a city break and the transportation systems are great they have metros they have buses they have trams they have trains then you know that you may not need an uber as much if you're going somewhere that's rural everything's kind of far you know that you might need to hire a car if you're going somewhere there's only mountains and stuff then you might just need a bike or you might want to hire a car so you need to understand where you're going and what form of transportation you're going to need while you're there so for somewhere like bali for example that i went to i knew very early on that you can use the uber app and uber over there is really 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 cheap there and in india um in delhi uber was crazy cheap you have apps like city mapper who have many different cities across the world it allows you to basically plan a journey in a city and it gives you the quickest and the best methods to get around how much money you need to take with you this is something i've always learned as i've gone on the only person that would know that best is you so only you will know based on the budget that you have created so there are different ways that i like to take money away with me i've recently signed up to a banking app called monzo and the account is online and there's an app on your phone and you can track your spending and everything i tend to use my monzo account only for traveling i transfer money from my main account into my monzo account whenever i'm going away and i make sure i transfer enough for the, from the start of the trip but i also make sure i have some cash on me make sure it's enough for the bare minimal things like water a train ticket if need be taxi maybe basically emergencies other than that i keep all my money on my monzo card they give you the best rate for the pound so let's say i use my monzo card in dubai for example it will tell me the price i've spent in aed and it will tell me the price it is in gbp so it'll break it down into those two currencies on the app and it tells me how much i've spent a day and it breaks down my spending into different categories so like like shopping, groceries, holidays, airlines, food. It basically breaks it down into my different expenditure and it puts it into categories so I can see how much I've spent and I've spent on what. So it's really good, it's nice and clear, it's simple. And there are other ways that you can use travel money. You can obviously go to the post office if you're from the UK and they tend to offer really, really good rates. There's another company called Thomas Exchange. I will link them in the description box. They are fantastic. Probably the best rates that I've seen all my life and I like really using them. I feel like I can trust their exchange rate. So I'll put them in the description box below so you guys can check them out and find where your nearest branch is. I used to use my own bank card, like my actual UK bank card when I go away, but they basically charge you two other things, including how much you've bought things for. So Monzo cuts all of that out. They only charge you your expenditure. They're only taking out what you've spent and it's your money. So you know how much you're spending, you know how much you're putting there. They don't take anything extra. So I love Monzo for that. But unfortunately, because Monzo is so new, you can only be invited. There's another banking app. I've never used them before, but I know if 
few of my friends do have, I can't really speak on how great they are because I like I said I don't use them but I know that they charge for membership which I think kind of sucks so you're spending money to spend money so they're basically charging you to spend your money I don't know I don't like that idea so Monzo I think are good it's your money they don't take anything from there in terms of admin or usage fees they don't charge you for anything of that kind you're using your own money and they tend to give you a really good rate as well so you're always spending in your own currency i don't know if it's available in the us there's some countries that you go to that it's better to exchange your money in the country and there's some where it's better to exchange your money in your home country you want to make sure your passport has enough time on it before you go anywhere most places ask that your passport has a validity of six months and above no less than six months on your passport before you go anywhere otherwise they just won't let you in the country that make sure you know if you need any visas for where you're going and make sure you know how much you're paying for these visas because that's another expense so if you're going somewhere that requires a visa not only are you having to pay for your flights accommodation you're also having to pay for visa and if your passport is close to expiry then you might need to renew your passport as well and if you see somewhere that you really want to go to and you're like i want to go there now it's obviously not realistic just put 20 pounds aside a week 30 pounds aside a month 50 pounds aside a month by december i'm gonna have x amount of money which means i can take my trip in march i can start booking my holiday and i will go in march always have a realistic idea of what you want to do and how you want to do it don't see something and because of that you're influenced so much that you want to get up and go tomorrow and you're going to put yourself in debt always make sure you have a realistic idea of where you want to go how much you have to spend and how much you can raise to spend by that time I always do that as well yeah I've booked my flight and I've paid for my accommodation but I also think about by that time how much am I gonna put aside towards that trip and how much will I have at that time for the trip now most places in the world have Wi-Fi free Wi-Fi access is there's some places that obviously are still quite behind and they don't necessarily have these functionalities and these advancements I've never really been someone to do this you can get somewhere and you can of course buy a sim the only way you would know the best sim to buy is of course if you checked online probably TripAdvisor or Lonely Planet these are the places that may give you the best indications of what sim to buy and if you're only going somewhere for like a week you may not necessarily need a sim card for your entire stay just make sure wherever you go don't be shy to ask for Wi-Fi listen my friends know me very very well when I get somewhere and I need Wi-Fi I'm putting my hand up I'm saying excuse me can I have your Wi-Fi password please holiday destinations these people know that foreigners and tourists they usually ask for the Wi-Fi password so either they make it free they just tell you what it is anyway or they give you a little slip don't be shy ask for Wi-Fi one thing I always do when I'm away before I spend money is I want to know how much I'm spending in pounds it's so funny because when I used to travel with my mum she'd do this all the time before we buy anything she's constantly converting it back to pounds and I always used to think but if you always do this then you won't spend any money but my mom is a wise woman I do it now places like Dubai because I kind of feel like Dubai is quite expensive like, it's low-key expensive guys wow pop it into Google and Google will tell me a rough estimate of how much that would be in pounds and that always helps I always like to know how much I'm spending and if it's worth what I'm buying so for example oh my goodness guys I remember in Dubai I bought two canned drinks I bought a coca-cola and I bought a mirinda two canned drinks it came up to 10 pounds basically and I was pissed but I was thirsty I was so angry yeah guys we were at a party so obviously I had to buy the drinks it was like 10 pounds 50 something pence I had paid for it before I put it into Google and I realized it was like 10 pounds I couldn't believe it but this is what I mean by at times you just need to pop things into Google and know what you're doing before you do them it's always good to keep up with your expenditure this is why I really like the Monzo app again because like I said it puts everything into perspective it tells you how much you spent every day it gives you a notification once you've spent tells you how much you spent in that day it shows you how much you have left in that account and it just keeps you in check better than counting cash better than having wads of cash with you all the time I just feel like it's easier most places accept chip and pin most places accept contactless most places in the world accept contactless or chip and pin make sure you have emergency cash on you not just for when you land which is very important but also for your entire trip don't keep your cash in one place it's very unfortunate but I was stolen from I was luckily it wasn't in a bad situation money was stolen from my hotel and the only people that have access to your hotel is cleaning staff or hotel staff so I mean it's only one of two people that would have stolen the money from my room pa it was actually pound currency I kept it in my bag and I pretty much kept it in every single bag I used for that trip I just kept it in the side pocket of my bag but sadly money was stolen out from that and I noticed it like on my last day so those people they thought they were smart they thought would steal it on the last day so she wouldn't notice but I noticed and I want my money back okay Armada Blue Bay Hotel Dubai but it was okay obviously because not just was it the last 
last day, but it wasn't the only money I had on me. I kept that money in case we needed like spare cash. So I just run down to the mall and I could exchange it for dirhams, but I didn't need it. Thank but I always say, don't keep your money in one place because you never know what could happen. Even if you're out and about and you have cash on you, keep one in your pocket, one in your bag, split your money into different places, keep it in your wig if you have to, but never put all your cash in one place. Never take all your cash out with you as well. Make use of the hotel safe. Most hotels, most villas, they have safes. So try and put your passport in those safes. With all that said, if you're not really a fan of having to do all the work yourself, there are of course sites that do all of these things for you. They basically book your entire holiday for you and you don't have to do the legwork. All you need to do is just pay one fixed price and you're good to go. And then there are sites like Groupon, for example, who give you getaway deals. They do a lot of really good getaway deals. And of course you have big names like Coroni who book incredible holidays for you. You've got people like Sandals. They basically book like really, really luxurious holidays for you. And those are pricey holidays. And if you do a comparison to booking your hotel separately from booking your hotel with as a package deal, you might notice that it's a bit more expensive or you might notice it's a bit cheaper. There are people like lastminuteholidays.com who pride themselves on giving you cheaper holidays if you book it as a package. But there are also websites like booking.com who tell you that they can beat any price that you find anywhere. So it really does depend on how much research you're willing to do and how much time you're willing to take to really, really intricately plan your holiday. I think that is everything I wanted to cover. If I have missed anything, then feel free to ask me in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer your questions. If you guys have burning questions, then of course you can reach me on Snapchat. I'm on Snapchat constantly and that's probably the quickest way you can get to me. I do hope you guys have found this video helpful. I have tried to cram all that I know and everything that I have experienced and all my personal suggestions. So I do hope it's been helpful for you. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel if you are new to my content. Give it a thumbs up if you have liked this video and of course, let me know in the comment section below if you would like me to film any more type of traveling advice videos and I will do my best on that guys. Thank you so much for watching guys and happy traveling. Travel the world, fall in love, eat great food, do all the activities you've wanted to do because life is too short, tomorrow isn't promised so live your life, live your best life. Thank you for watching again guys and I'll see you next time.